You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 200. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. Now, this is not just any podcast episode, this is my 200th episode. Yep, it's a special moment in time for the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, and I couldn't be more thrilled with today's topic. So as I was deciding on the topic for the 200th episode, I mean, I knew it had to be extra special. I wanted to celebrate in a way that wasn't just about me giving you more content. I wanted to go above and beyond with this episode. And that is why I've asked some of my closest friends and peers to come on and share about a concept that I want you to consider incorporating into your business. Now, this concept is part mindset, part strategy. It's the concept my friend James Wedmore explains as zigging in your business when everyone else is zagging. You can also look at this concept as running your own race, throwing group think to the wind and going against the grain and doing your own thing. Now, before I go any further and tell you who is going to be on this episode today, there are 10 online marketers that I cannot wait for you to hear from. I first want to talk about the reasons why you might want to zig in your business. And I also want to give you one word of caution about this idea of zigging before you try it out. Okay, so first, how do you know it's time to zig in your business? How do you know you're ready to do something different, step off the beaten path and try it your own way, or just really mix things up? Well, since I know you pretty well, I put together four scenarios that will likely resonate with you. At least one of these I think will resonate with you so that you can really understand the power of a zig. So number one, it's a soul thing. Now, that sounds weird coming from me. I typically don't talk that way, but I mean it. Sometimes in your business, you just have this true desire to shake things up. You've been doing things the same way for a while now, and you want to branch out and try something new. Like I said, you want to step off the beaten path. This is me. This is when I know I'm ready to zig. And I think this year, 2018, is going to be my year of doing the zig. I've done things the same way for a long time, and I love the simplicity of my business, but I want to shake things up a little bit. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I've got the rest of the year to plan it out, but you'll see me do something a little different this year than maybe what everybody else is doing because I have that movement in my soul. I just feel like this is the time I'm bursting at the seams. I want to try something different. Along those same lines, this is still a number one, the scenario number one, you might just feel burned out and you might be tired of what you've always been doing and you want to shake things up. So that's also a good time for a zig. Now here's number two, something in your marketing or the strategies you're using in your business just doesn't feel right to you. I was having drinks just this weekend with my good friend, Mary Hyatt. And she was telling me about the launch of her online training program. It's called Babe Redefined. I love that name. And I said, how did the launch go? And she said, it went well. I just don't like launching. She said, I just don't like anything about launching. It doesn't feel right to me. And in that moment, because I know Mary so well, I said, oh, there's no problem with you launching. It's just that you need to find a way to launch that feels good to you. And so many of my students can resonate with this one. You don't want to be high pressure sales. You don't want to be sending out 20 emails in one week. You don't want to stay up all night launching. Like there's different ways to launch and I've done in all the different ways. And a lot of the times it's high pressure, high stress. And so when you launch, sometimes you need to do it your way. You need to find a different way to launch. And so it might be a good time for you to zig If you're feeling that the way you're marketing or the way you're doing business just doesn't feel good to you, 
You're not excited about the way you're putting your messaging out there. Might be time to zig. Here's number three. You're looking for a way to stand out in a noisy space. Okay, that's all of us. We all work in a really noisy space. The online marketing world in general is way too noisy. But I put this one in here because if you're looking to stand out in a noisy space, you've got to do it in an authentic way. I guess it goes without saying, but I wanted to bring it up here. You can do something totally different than everybody is doing in your market, but you've got to do it for the right reasons in an authentic way. Sometimes people create these really weird ways to stand out. That's just not them. And so I love being different. I love standing out. I love having a bigger voice, but just stay really true to yourself when you do it. And number four, a good scenario to know it's time to zig is if the way you've been doing it is just not producing the kind of results you want. Maybe you're not able to connect with your audience the way you want to connect with them. You're not making as big of an impact as you know that you can, or you're not making enough money. And so now it's time to zig. It's time to do something different. So those are just four different scenarios just to help you understand when it might be a good time to zig. But what I'm going to tell you next is likely going to be very different than what you might hear from other online marketing experts. I'm all about taking risks, and I've taken many in my business. However, I would say that I take calculated risks. And when it comes to zigging, you have to do it intelligently. So first, my suggestion to you is model the best. Find someone who is having the success in the area that you want success and research and study what they're doing. Model what they are doing because there's no need to reinvent the wheel when you're just starting out. I learned this from Tony Robbins way back when. So if it's your first time out with a new strategy, a new launch, a new creation in your business, model who's already getting the success you want. And then from there, once you've experimented, once you've gone out there and you've done it in a way that was a really solid foundation, you modeled somebody else who was getting the results you wanted, then it's time to think about the zig. Then it's time to say, okay, what felt right? What didn't feel right? I've done it once. Now I want to change it up and make sure I do it my way. Because a lot of people that might just go out there and zig right from the get-go, you have no idea what you're doing. You say you're doing it your way, but your strategies are not based on any proof that they would ever work. I like to have a really strong foundation and then do it my way. I think that's what I've done from day one. This is very different advice than you'd probably hear from someone else. But if you like my style, if you like the way I've built my business, if you like my principles and strategies of what I've taught you along the way in 199 episodes, then maybe you'll trust me on this, that first you model the best, you do it, you experiment, you take mental notes, you know what worked, you know what didn't work, then you explore the zig. Hopefully that resonates with you. If it doesn't, go on with your bad self and just zig before you even know what you're doing. Hey, you never know. But I just wanted to share my own advice with you on that one. Okay, so let's get back to the extra special guests on today's episode. I don't know about you, but when I'm learning something new, like this concept of zigging, I learn by example. Sure, I can tell you that you need to zig when others are zagging, But what the heck does that really mean? What does that even look like? And that's exactly why I asked my special group of friends and peers, people who are truly some of the best of the best in the business to come on today's episode and share their stories of the zig. So let me give you my lineup and then we're just going to get right to it. First, let's start with the ladies. On today's episode, you are going to hear from Jasmine Starr, Jenna Kutcher, Julie Solomon, Diane Sanfilippo, and my copywriter, Tarzan Kay. Now for the gentlemen, you are going to hear from Russell Brunson, James Wedmore, Ray Edwards, Pat Flynn, and Rick Mulready. Yep, that's some serious name dropping there, and I cannot wait for you to hear from each and every one of them. Now, if I just name somebody that you're not really familiar with, by all means, check them out. I mean, like I said, these people are the best of the best in what they do. So I'm going to link to each of their websites on my show notes, amyporterfield.com forward slash 200. 
Don't hesitate to go check each and every one of them out if you're not familiar because they are amazing. All right. I know you're excited to hear from them, but there's one more thing that I want to share with you. To celebrate the 200th episode milestone, I wanted to do something special for you, my loyal listener and virtual friend. So when recording this episode, I actually recorded one section that was really personal and honest about my own experience with the Zig concept. But this episode just became way too long with all of my special guests, and so I took it out. But just when I was going to hit delete on that segment, I thought, I can't delete it. It's really good and really important for my audience to hear. In this deleted clip, I talk about a surprising way that you can zig, one that totally might resonate with you and also take away some of the overwhelm and pressure that you put on yourself. So I had an idea. I want to send this deleted clip directly to you. So here's what you need to do to get your hands on this, because I promise you it is oh so good. So in honor of the 200th episode, I want you to take a screenshot of this episode. Maybe you're listening to it on your smartphone or on your computer. It doesn't matter. Just take a screenshot, post it on Instagram, either in your Instagram feed or on Instagram stories and use the hashtag 200 with Amy. So use the hashtag 200 with Amy. And I want you to tag me when you post it. When I see it, I'm going to slide into your DM with a link to this deleted clip that I really do believe you will find incredibly valuable. So I'm going to personally DM you when I see that you've posted an image of this podcast episode with the hashtag 200 with Amy, but tag me so I can easily find you. I cannot wait to send you a personal DM. I think you are going to love this deleted audio segment that is personal and I think will resonate with you as you are moving forward on your journey of building your business. Okay, so now it's time to dive into our special guest. Uh, You are in for a treat. You are going to love every single one of them. Let's do this. Okay, so now we're going to get into my guest expert shares. What I did is I sent an email to my friends and I said, can you share with me a time when you zigged when everyone else was zagging? Share with me an experience or a moment in time when you did something different than everybody else. I didn't know what they were going to send in, so it was really fun to listen to all of their stories once I got all the audio files together. And like I said, I think you're going to love every single one of these shares. So Jasmine Starr is going to talk about customer support at a super personal level. Now, what she's going to share is epic. I actually used it in my last launch and it worked like gangbusters. So Jasmine, shout out. Thank you for this Zig concept. It was incredible. But what I love most about what Jasmine's going to share is her ability to storytell. So after I listened to the segment she sent me, I called her and I said, did you learn how to storytell somewhere or were you just born with it? And she said, listen, I think everybody could learn to be a better storyteller, but it is something I was born with. And I thought, thank God for God given talents. I mean, seriously, the girl is a master storyteller. So listen in. Okay. So where should I start? I should probably explain why this business venture, like this moment, was such a big time in my life. And I should probably explain who I am too, but I'm going to get there in a second. Okay, so let me set the scene. It's March 2017, and the course I waited a year to finally launch was ready. But it just wasn't any launch. I created a four-part video series. I created a brand new webinar. I had spent the most I had ever spent on Facebook and Instagram ads. I was ready. I was more than ready. I woke up on the morning that the doors opened to our launch and I felt invincible. The day the cart opened, that was also the day that the final video of the video series was set to be released. And it was also the day that I started hosting webinars. I had three webinars planned for that day. So with coffee in my hand and birds chirping outside my window, I was ready to launch my dream course. But then the worst possible thing happened. I felt like I was walking through a nightmare. At the end of the first day, so this is after the video series, after the three webinars, after spending what felt like my entire 401k on ads, 
I had sold only 14 seats. <laughs> Should I repeat that last part again? 14. Not 1,400, 1414. I was devastated. I mean, I was so sad I couldn't even speak because I was humiliated and I was shocked. And I took this thing personally. I had created a course that felt like a part of me. And so when people didn't respond to the offer, I felt like they were turning away from me. Now, I know this is the worst thing to think, but I'm just being honest. It was how I felt at the time, whether or not it was right or wrong. But overall, it was just a really rough day. So that night, I turned to my friends and my trusted peers for advice. And they're some of the most brilliant people I know. And they all said the same thing or maybe like variations of the same thing. Send more emails, do more Facebook lives, increase your ad spend. Okay. And though these were amazing ideas, they just sounded like more of the same. And with this situation looking as bleak as it was, I didn't need to act the same. I needed to be different. I had to look at what everybody else was doing and then do completely the opposite. So I did the unscalable. I did the thing that so few people talk about because it's nearly impossible to do. I started reaching out to prospective students one by one. So I added a support chat box to my sales page. I handled support tickets. I personally responded to every email and every direct message. Basically, I did everything to create a personal connection with potential buyers. I continued hosting webinars, but then I added my personal email address in case they wanted to reach out personally. I even called people to chat about the program to ensure that it was going to be a right fit for them. So for a week straight, I sat on my couch and did what nobody said I should do. I went old school and I started knocking on some digital doors. For 15 hours a day, I simply connected with people one-on-one. And guess what? It worked. I mean, and it didn't work in the way like, whew, so glad I just saved my arse kind of way. No, it like really worked. We surpassed our wildest goals. Like we beat our imaginations. We couldn't dream this big. And I was shocked. By the time the doors closed, we had hundreds of new students, all hungry hustlers who were ready to change their businesses. Now, I learned valuable lessons, but mostly one of the most important was to look at what everybody else was doing and then run the other way. As Amy celebrates her 200th podcast episode, I couldn't be happier for her. And I couldn't be happier calling her a friend and a trusted peer. She has always encouraged me to think and act and just be different. And though I have a really long way to go, I am really proud of how far I've come. Before I go, I should probably also mention who I am, right? My name is Jasmine Starr, and I am a photographer and business strategist from Newport Beach, California. Though I'm probably most known for my photos and social media platforms, I am most happy for being known as a person who wants your success as much as I want my own. You can find out more about me at jasminestar.com. Our next share is from Ray Edwards. And the reason why I put him in the number two spot is because what he's going to share complements what Jasmine just shared with you around customer support. But Ray is taking it to an entirely new level. Take a listen. Hey, this is Ray Edwards, and thank you, Amy, for this opportunity to share. What we did differently at my company is we recently promoted a very high-end offer. It was a minimum $5,000 to participate in this offer. And instead of doing what everybody else does, which is send people a receipt and an autoresponder, welcoming them to whatever program you just promoted, I actually recorded a personal video for each person. I just used my webcam on my laptop. I started up the recorder and I said hello to them. Like I said, hello, Amy. Thank you so much for being part of this program. I'm so happy to have you be in it. Here's what happens next. And I just explained what the process was going to be like. It only took me about 30 seconds for each person, but the response we got was off the charts, crazy good. I had people sending me emails and leaving me voicemails saying, you know, I've bought many programs for $2,000, $5,000. I've never had anybody personally respond to me this way. I'm a fan for life. So a little extra effort, but I think it was darn well worth it. 
And by the way, something else that's been darn well worth it is you consistently sticking with this podcast. It's so hard to believe you've done 200 episodes now, but don't stop. I'm looking forward to the next 200. I know they'll be even better. Okay, we're moving right along. Our next guest is Pat Flynn. And Pat is going to talk about giving content away and building trust. And I'm so glad he shared this because he is the master at this type of zig. So listen in. Hey, this is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income Podcast and the Ask Pat Podcast. First of all, Amy, I just want to let you know that I'm so proud of you for getting to episode 200. I remember when you started the show, I knew it was going to be a hit right from the start. And it's no surprise to me that it's one of the podcasts that I know a lot of my listeners also listen to. So congratulations to you on episode 200 and all the hard work that you've put into it, but also all the hard work that your audience is putting into taking action on what it is that you teach. So congratulations to all of you. Now, I really love this topic, Amy. I think it's important for all of us to consider how we can do things differently in zig instead of zag or wig instead of wag, because that's what helps us stand out, right? And Your prompt brought me back to when I was in kindergarten, actually, because I was actually living in Connecticut at the time. I didn't move to San Diego till I was in second grade. But during kindergarten, I remember going to baseball camp. And at baseball camp, one of the first things that we did was we sat in a circle. There was, I don't know, I don't really remember how many kids there were, but there were a lot of us. And the coaches went around and asked every kid to introduce themselves and tell each other who our favorite baseball player was. And I don't remember the names, but I remember when it was my turn I said Nolan Ryan, and Nolan Ryan was a pitcher for the Texas Rangers, and I was the only person there who had said a pitcher. I remember that moment because the coaches all put their eye on me, and they said, wait, you like a pitcher? What about this batter? What about this batter? I said, no, that's my favorite player. I want to be a pitcher. And so I became like the teacher's pet or the coach's pet at that time. I was always on the mound with the coaches while the other people were hitting. And I got the most coaching time because of that. I got recognized because I was different. Now, that wasn't necessarily done on purpose. It just so happened that way. But your prompt kind of sparked that. And I remember a number of different instances in my business history when I purposefully took that opposite route. And the first one was when I started my website to help people pass an exam in the architecture industry. Still alive today. You can find it at greenexamacademy.com. This was the first business I ever ran online after I got laid off from the architecture world. And I remember searching around the web for all this information about this exam that I took. And I was like, how can I be different than everybody else who's talking about the same stuff? And the big apparent thing for me was realizing that, well, everybody was asking you to pay for their study guide material. And I said, what if I just gave everything away for free? I think that would be the most helpful. And I think because of that, people would come my way. And actually what happened was, well, that's exactly what happened. I became the number one website on Google, the number one referred website by the United States Green Building Council to help people pass their exam. And then by the time I gained all this notoriety in the space, I had launched a study guide that was only for sale for $19.95. And I sold hundreds of copies and that replaced and 2X'd my income that I was making as an architect before I got laid off. And so that was really the start of it, purposefully going free and as much value as I could without any asking for payments, which built up all this trust because nobody in this space of professional architecture was doing that. And that changed my life because that led to smartpassiveincome.com, which was built in October of 2008. And the big thing I did on smartpassiveincome.com was, again, looking at the lay of the land, understanding how things went in the internet business space and the entrepreneurship space, and realizing that, again, very similarly, people were putting their best information behind a paywall and also not being completely transparent. I mean, I knew from having started my own business already in the architecture space that it wasn't easy. It was not a get rich quick thing. And in doing research on everybody else who was teaching this stuff, everybody was saying it was a get rich quick thing. Everybody was saying the secrets lie behind this thing. You just got to pay with your credit card. And I was like, no, I'm going to put everything out there for free. And I'm going to tell everybody how much money I'm making and exactly where it's coming from. And that's where my monthly income reports come from and what has become really what I've been known for amongst a few other things. But people always say, oh, Pat, yeah, that guy who puts his monthly income reports up on the web to see. And you can actually go to my website right now at smartpassiveincome.com and check out those income reports. You can go back into history and see how much money I made and where it all came from and all the lessons I learned and all the failures I made and all the mistakes I made too. That's the other thing that I'm transparent about is I'm not afraid to share what I'm not good at and the mistakes I made. And that's another thing that attracts people And then the last thing related to Smart Passive Income that I share for for sure is my family. 
and the fact that I don't have a Lamborghini and I don't own like a giant mansion, like all these other people talking about internet marketing, I'm just very real, right? Like my Lamborghini is a 2012 Toyota Sienna. And I love that thing because the sliding doors are great and you can just go in there with the kids anyway. That's kind of what brings me back down to earth and I think separates me from all those others who are teaching the same thing. So that's, in a nutshell, a few examples of me zigging while everybody else is zagging. And one more quick thing before I let you go, and this relates back to my layoff and this idea of going the opposite direction. You know, if it hadn't been for my layoff, I wouldn't have gone in that other direction, the other direction being an entrepreneur because I was conditioned to believe that being an architect was what I was meant to do. And I, I absolutely loved what I did, but I promise you that if I didn't get let go, I would still be an architect and maybe I'd still be happy and I, and I would hope I would be happy, but I definitely wouldn't be this happy and I definitely wouldn't have these same opportunities that I have in front of me now that I'm an entrepreneur. So the lesson being that sometimes going the opposite direction, that has to be an internal unless you get lucky like me and get laid off, it has to be an internal choice that you have to make to go the opposite direction. And for some of you, it might be as simple as just doing a different strategy than what everybody else is doing. But for some of you, it may be an internal decision that you have to make that you wanna go in this new direction and that differs from where you thought you were gonna go. So it doesn't even involve other people or other businesses. It might just involve the new you versus the old you. That's it, thanks again. I appreciate you for having me on, Amy, and everybody for listening to this. Good luck. What was really fun about getting all of these audio files from my friends is that, like I mentioned, I didn't know what they were going to share. And so when Pat sent his in sharing about how he gave it all away for free, Diane Sanfilippo shared the complete opposite as her zig, which was really cool to see the differences in how they looked at content. So go ahead and listen to Diane share about her zig. Hey, this is Diane Sanfilippo. And back in the early days of social media and blogging, I'm talking back before 2010, I was writing for my blog and website, just like a lot of my peers were. And a couple of years later, eventually wrote a book called Practical Paleo. And one thing that I noticed a lot of my friends and peers went on to do was continue to blog very regularly and create revenue streams from content creation that was on a very tight or fast turnaround schedule. So I tend to call it a hamster wheel, a content hamster wheel. And while there's nothing wrong with that, if folks like doing that and enjoy it, I really didn't find that staying with a tight content schedule of that nature in order to generate crazy amounts of traffic to my blog so that I could generate revenue felt good for me. That did not feel like something that was true to me. So I went a different direction and I really focused on creating programs and content that would be for sale to my readers. Of course, I still have tons of free content and lead magnets and all that good stuff. But rather than relying on ad revenue from my website, from creating tons of content all the time and getting people to the site a lot, I focused more on creating my own program so that I could control the entire environment surrounding when I launch them, how I present them, when folks come to my site for information and find out how they can get into my circle and learn from me. And so for me, that's been a really great thing. I've definitely found that my personality is suited to marching to the beat of my own drum and figuring out when I want to do something rather than kind of you know, being a slave to a content schedule, which again, for some folks, that's totally fine. But I will say this, in terms of a content schedule, I do consistently create content that is shared with my readers and I will say my listeners every single week. Myself and my co-host Liz Wolf have been creating a podcast for more than six years. I went back and looked and our very first episode was August 31st, 2011. This is before most people even knew what a podcast was. And back then in the whole paleo sphere, folks were asking us, do we have enough paleo podcasts already? Is there a paleo podcast critical mass? That was one of the questions in our very first episode. And that was kind of another example of, you know what, just because somebody says they think there are too many of these doesn't mean we don't have something to share. And so we started back then. The podcast has now gone on to be an award-winning show. And more than six years later, we still have a very, very strong listener base. And it's one of the best decisions I ever made to start a podcast because 
as Amy knows, our readers and listeners really connect with us so well through a platform like a podcast. So I will say this, by staying focused on creating content for sale rather than content that was specifically to generate traffic and ad revenue, that's something that helped to mold and shape the mindset of my readers. So instead of them knowing and assuming that everything I do will be free for them, there's a totally different vibe. When I create something and there's a price on it, nobody really bucks or sort of pushes back because they know that I create tons of free stuff too. And when I give them something that will have a price on it, It's not only going to be awesome, but it's going to be next level because what I'm giving them for free is already awesome. And so what I put a price tag on is sort of my absolute best, my blood, sweat and tears, because that is how much I value the fact that they're going to spend their money with me and participate in whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it's a program, a book, et cetera. And I think that it's really important to know yourself when you make these decisions on whether or not you're going to go with the flow and do what other folks are doing because that feels good and it feels like you're supported and you have an environment around that. And I think that that's fantastic for many, many people. I'm just not that person. I tend to sort of push back when I see other people all doing one thing. I tend to go the other way just by nature. So I found what works for me as well. So in that, I will say whether or not you do something that is revenue based in your content creation that's on a consistent basis or not, we all do need to be creating content very consistently because our readers and listeners need to know that they can count on us and that they can expect great things from us all the time. But how we choose to earn money from that is something that we can be super individual about and just pay attention. Maybe folks around you are doing it one way and you need to just take a turn and go a different way. Thanks so much, Amy, for having me. Absolutely love your show. So excited for you to hit 200 episodes. That is an amazing milestone. So thank you so much for having me on Online Marketing Made Easy. I absolutely love this show. Thanks so much. Next up, we have Julie Solomon. And Julie is going to share about collaborations. And she is a PR expert. So listening to how she really refined the art of the pitch and she took it up a level and she did things differently is so incredibly interesting. Enjoy. Hello, online marketing made easy listeners. This is Julie Solomon, and I am so excited to be here today and share with you guys some times in my career as a online marketer and strategist that I started to zag when everyone else was zigging and some really unique tips that I wanted to share with you guys on how I really tried to go against the grain and how that really helped and kind of paid off in the end. So about four and a half years ago, I started blogging. And I was under the kind of the blog track, if you will, of that millennial lifestyle, fashion, beauty, motherhood space. This was really at the time that that space of blogging was really starting to blow up. Brands were paying attention. There were ample opportunities to start to monetize in that space. And I definitely wanted to figure that side out, right? I was spending so much time and energy getting into the blogging space. And I really wanted to figure out a good way to monetize all of the time and energy that I was spending in my side hustle. So I started to sit back and I kind of started to watch. I am someone who is a high fact finder and I like to really kind of see how things are working and systems are working, gather my facts so I can really be able to execute more effectively and efficiently. So when I started kind of doing this and kind of catching on to things, the one thing that I really noticed, whether someone was a super successful blogger earning, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month blogging, or whether they were just starting out, the one key ingredient that they had in common was that they were doing a lot of catching. And what I mean by catching is that they were sitting back and waiting for the opportunities to come to them, waiting for the brand deals, waiting for the partnerships, waiting for those collaborations to come to them. And then once they came to them, of course, they would take the next steps to turn that opportunity into a monetized deal for them. So of course, I put my PR hat on and started thinking the way that I really have for the past 10 years as a publicist, why don't I just pitch, 
right? Like I've spent the past however many years pitching clients all day long. Why don't I just start kind of pitching myself as a brand and pitching my blog as its own entity and kind of see what happens instead of just sitting back and like waiting for it to happen and just catching what may or may not come through. And man, did it pay off. Not only did I start acquiring so many brand deals and opportunities, but I actually turned my blogger career and the money that I was making, I started generating about 40 to 50% more annually than I was when I was just sitting back catching. So that number to me was like, wow, I was not pitching all of this time that I should have been. And I was really losing out on 50% of the income. I mean, that is a massive number. So I started doing more of this and I started reaching out to brands. I started pitching, really thinking of unique and creative ways to figure out how to work with them and collaborate with them. And I started kind of making more than what a lot of these other bloggers that might have had higher engagement and way higher following numbers and might have been doing it for a lot longer than I had at the time. I started making more monthly and annually than they were because I wasn't just sitting back waiting for the caught offer. Another thing that I also started doing within this pitching that I was testing out again and kind of acquiring my facts was that I also started using media or leveraging media, I should say, to acquire more brand deals. And I'll give you a really good example of how this happened. There was one time that I was working with a brand who wanted to come in and kind of reshape our home a little bit. Our son at the time was getting, you know, was growing up. He was one turning two. He kind of needed like a big boy room. And there were just some things in the houses in our home that really needed to update, if you will, to kind of grow with our family and how we were growing. So I was going to do a collaboration with a very well-known furniture company. And I started thinking, how can I make this bigger? How can I make this more impactful? How can I make this really serve this company, right? So I started to figure out ways to really help their bottom line? What are their goals? What are some of the challenges that they're facing? How can I help them sell through? What is their bottom line number? How can I help with their return on investment? Really kind of thinking about ways that I could make this more impactful for them and really kind of have a win-win at the end of the day. So I asked those questions. I had a lot of phone calls with them to kind of suss this out. And what I realized at the end of it was that they were really looking to cultivate more media awareness for themselves. So I thought, well, why don't I kind of like get this going for them? So then I went to a media outlet and I pitched them the idea. And I said to them, look, I am collaborating and partnering with this furniture company. This is our idea. We want to transform my son's baby room into a big boy room, but I want to make this really impactful. Why don't we transform the whole house? Would you ex media outlet be interested in seeing a full gallery transformation of how we transform not only my son's room, but our bedroom, our living room, and more common areas within the home that we all use as a family. And they love the idea. So then I was able to go back to the furniture company and say, X Media Outlet wants to do coverage on this partnership that we're doing, but they want to see more than just one room. So then I went from getting one room completely done with compensated interior design services, by the way, to having my entire home completely remodeled with the interior design services. And then I had this fantastic media collaboration to go with it as well. So that was just another notch in my belt. It was in a notch on my press kit to really kind of utilize where my blogger career was going at the time, because my goals were really in that lifestyle space, right? So to be able to get a brand deal like this, as well as to have a prominent media company come up behind us and media imprint to come behind us to say, hey, we want to cover this was a really big deal for my blogger career at the time. So I would definitely say to those out there that if you ever see yourself kind of doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, you may want to think about other unique ways that you can make it happen. And what I saw in this particular case was definitely pitching. Pitching to me has by far transformed my career than any other thing that is out there. It has helped me double, triple my income sometimes. It has helped me grow my my blogger views over 68%, just really getting out there and not just being okay with sitting back and just catching everything. So that is something that I really do try to teach bloggers and influencers now is that art form of pitching and how you can pitch. And, you know, I offer different pitch templates and just any kind of way that I can remind 
influencers and bloggers and really entrepreneurs out there to really put yourself out there and to be seen. And the more that you're going to be on the forefront of the minds of the people that you are hoping to build lasting relationships, the more opportunities you're going to have to do that by getting in front of them and pitching is really one fascinating and unique and fantastic way to do just that. And I also just want to say congratulations to Amy on her 200th episode. This is so incredible. What an achievement. And I can only just say personally what online marketing made easy has meant to me. It was a catalyst to so much of what I do now and really was a catalyst for the influencer podcast. So I definitely have this podcast and Amy to thank for all the amazing work that they do, all of the lives that they touch and congrats to 200 and here's to 200 more. Next up, we have my copywriter, Tarzan K. Oh, I just absolutely love Tarzan. And Tarzan is a woman that does things her way, for sure. And she's going to share with you how she wanted to change things up. She didn't want to do a traditional launch, so she did it an entirely different way, and it was a huge success. I'm Tarzan Kay, and I am a launch copywriter. I write emails and sales pages for amazing clients like Amy, but I also have my own suite of online trainings. So I am super busy with client work, and it's really hard to find time, no matter what business you're in, to actually create a course. But I had this idea for a training that I really, really wanted to do, and I didn't want to take a ton of time off and do a big launchy launch with all the bonuses and the three videos and the bells and whistles. I just really wanted to keep it simple and focus on a topic that I'm super duper passionate about, which is teaching other freelancers better money habits and basically how to make more money in their businesses. So I could have turned it into a big thing and done all the bells and whistles, but I decided to just go lean and put it out there. I had no fancy funnel, no webinar sales pitch, no upsells, downsells, none of that stuff. And really, I did everything kind of wrong. I'm making air quotes as I say that. I broke all the rules about how launches are supposed to go. So I had a webinar coming up. It was a joint webinar for with an audience that was not my own. And I just didn't, I just, I wasn't going to pitch them. I made it purely educational and they were all new people on the webinar. I also offered it to my list. So I had about 300 people sign up and I had 180 people show up to the webinar. So I just presented the training. It was a training about money blocks and getting your money mindset in place so you can become a six-figure freelancer. It went really well. People really loved it. And then after that, I did an email only promotion. This is the most bare bones launch I've ever done. And it was also among the most successful considering how much work I put into it, which was not really a lot. So I put together a really short sales page that took me about half a day to write. And I passed it off to my designer to make it beautiful. And this is so crazy. I kept the cart open for three weeks which is a little bit insane. I delivered the course as a live training that cost $297. I didn't have time to go and create a full online training. My days were full. I have clients that are doing launches and I've got meetings that are scheduled and things in my calendar. I really couldn't just say, hey, I'm going to take a couple hours every morning to build up my course content. I didn't do that. All I had was an outline and I had a really beautiful slide deck that, again, I passed off to my designer to make it really super gorgeous. So it was a live training, two hours for $2.97. I didn't offer a single bonus, nothing, nada. The only incentive was early bird pricing. And that's actually where I got most of my sales. So if you signed up directly after the webinar, there was maybe a five-day period where you could get the training for $1.97 instead of $2.97. And it was really cool. I've launched higher priced products before and sales are a little bit slower and it was like a little bit hard because you're kind of waiting like, oh, when is the next sale coming? And this was just a low priced product and I instantly felt my audience connecting with it. My phone is ding, ding, dinging all weekend. It just felt amazing. It was so encouraging, even though it's a small price point to feel those sales coming in. It was so validating and it was It was just beautiful and so much fun. It really took the heaviness and the scariness out of launching. And in the end, we did about 10,000, we did just under $10,000 in sales after refunds and lapse payments. But the best part about it was that 
there was no stress. It wasn't like a big, scary launch that I had invested a whole bunch of money and paid lots of people and done a whole bunch of ads. And I've done that kind of launch before. And I I know what it feels like. It's a lot to take on. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of mental energy. And what I love about this style of doing a quick launch that's really simple and it's just a live training and it's low price, it was much, much, much lower pressure And the audience loved it. Everybody felt like they got a great deal. And eventually I did turn it into an online course. I brought my VA on board and I re-recorded it. And then she turned it into a slide deck and uploaded it to Teachable. And now I have a beautiful little passive income product. That's a nice moneymaker for my business. But initially it was just so simple. I know everyone thinks they have to do all of the things right out of the gate, but you don't. You can just let it be simple. Let it be easy. And it just, it feels so good to have gotten that thing out there. The other thing that was vastly different was that my goal wasn't to make $100,000. My goal was to put something out there that I know can help people and that I feel really passionate about. So it was spiritually extremely fulfilling for me. The students got a lot out of it. Everybody ended up happy. So I think this is a really good, this is probably my top number one zag story of the year. And I hope if you're thinking about launching, this is a great way to test it out. Just test the waters. Try one small thing. It sure worked for me. Okay, switching gears just a bit, you're going to hear from James Wedmore next. And James really inspired this episode because I learned the concept of zig and zag from him. And I love his example of doing something different. Listen in. Hello, my name is James Wedmore, and I am super honored and excited to do a guest audio training for all of Amy's listeners for her 200th episode of her podcast. What a great podcast. What a great journey. Congratulations, Amy. And here's to 200 more. I'm so happy for you. So I'm going to give you guys some quick examples. And then I'll ask you some questions to start thinking and doing differently. First of all, we can do different in your content. I created a podcast just about two years ago called the Mind Your Business Podcast. At the time, I created it because it was something that I wanted. But I noticed talking about business and talking about marketing, I hadn't seen anybody, at least in my experience, have a more spiritual approach to business and to have a more mindset approach to business and marketing because that's something that has played a huge role in my life. And so I said, screw it. I'm going to do it. And it blew up. And I, and the thing people say is like, oh my goodness, James is the only person I know who's combining effective marketing and business with spiritual practices and mindset. Well, what do you know? I just did something different, right? I use a lot of the same stuff, like people using a podcast, the way I market the podcast, but it was a different type of content. Now, you can also do different in your offers, what you sell, what is missing in the marketplace, what is everyone else selling and that you could do differently. And for us, when I saw everybody creating courses, I was like, well, I could do something different, which was a mastermind. I figured people at a higher level don't want another course. They want a group of people that they can connect with, work together in person, and do some really awesome stuff together. So we created a mastermind. There weren't that many masterminds at the time. It's not like it had never been done before, but there are a heck of a lot more masterminds today than there were just a couple years ago. So I I started my mastermind three years ago. Now, here's another way of doing different in your marketing. How can you execute your copy, your branding, or in this example that I'm about to give, the modality in which your marketing is experienced? So easy to do digital stuff, send an email, write a Facebook post, or do a webinar or something like that. Well, I did a physical mailer. Again, this stuff's not new. It's just when everyone's going right, I'm going to go left. It's not like people are sitting there going, oh my goodness, so many online marketers keep sending me mail to my house. Ugh. No, they're not getting any. Maybe one a quarter or something, right? It's very infrequent. But how many email invites are they getting for a webinar? Or how many Facebook ads are they seeing? Boom, so we sent them a mailer. Now, here's the thing. Let me give you some stats on the mailer. I sent out a mailer actually for a $30,000 offer that we have. And I sent it to 20 people and I had 15 say yes out of 20. It worked really well. (laughs) By the way, one of the cool things we did in the mailer is that when you open it up, it was like a binder. And when you open it up, there's a actual video screen 
plane a movie in there, like a video that I made. So it, it's a folder and opens up. It has a video embedded in there. It was so cool that you can get this type of stuff made. So it's, it's very custom. It's very fancy. It's very nice, but it's something they hold in their hand. Great presentation. I did something different. Another thing is instead of doing a webinar, recently I tried something different. Instead of saying, here's a webinar with the seven steps or the five steps or three secrets, I did a hot seat webinar, which means there was no content. You get on the call live with me, you submit an application or a question, and I'm gonna unmute you, and we're gonna do a live hot seat coaching experience on the call. And it was amazing. It was unbelievable. It was a really awesome experience. In fact, I think something like 90% of the people that got unmuted ended up purchasing the program, which was really neat as well. But even people just listening in got a ton of value hearing the coaching and the questions that I was asking. So can you do different? Here's some questions to ask yourself. What is everyone else doing right now? Like, what are your competitors? I'm doing that in air quotes. But what is everyone else that's a competitor doing in your industry right now? What opportunity does that make available to you? Here's another question. What do you feel like is missing or lacking in the marketplace? Or another way to ask that is, what does your audience really, really, really need that they're not getting right now? These are the type of questions we need to start asking. We need to start looking, what is the general direction that everyone else is going in so that we can go in the other direction and we can stand out even easier? And we need to start leading, not following. Don't do it because it worked for him or it worked for her. That's not the reason to do it. What worked for them is not the thing they did, but the fact that they did something different. Now it's your turn to do something different. I'm James Wedmore. Thank you so much. I hope this helped. And Amy, congrats again on 200 episodes. Next up, Russell Brunson. Russell's going to talk about an identity shift in order to build a loyal tribe and this whole concept of churn and what he did about it. It's so good. Listen in. Hey, this is Russell Brunson. I'm one of the co-founders of ClickFunnels.com, and I'm so excited to be here on Amy's 200th episode. Congratulations, Amy. We love what you do. We love how you serve your community, and you are an amazing person, and so grateful to be here on today's episode. Now, I want to share with you guys something that we did inside of our company that has dramatically increased the bottom line, and it's different than what most people do. As we started growing ClickFunnels, and as we started watching other companies around us grow, most people focus so much on, you know, how do we spend more money? How do we drive more traffic? How do we increase our conversion rates and things like that? And as ClickFunnels was growing, one of the things we noticed is that we could do a lot of work like that to get people to to sign up and become a member, but there's always a percentage of people that left. In my world, we call that churn, and churn is like the killer of companies, right? Especially companies like ours that focus on recurring monthly recurring revenue. And so our churn numbers, while our company kept growing, our churn numbers kept getting bigger and bigger, and we were freaking out, like, how do we how do we lower churn? And we tried all sorts of the traditional things that people do, sending out follow-up campaigns and sending out free videos and lessons and, and all the traditional things. And one day we had an idea. We thought, you know, the reason why people would not use our software, if they would create an account and come in and, and then cancel, is probably because they just don't know what to do. Like, they're confused. There might be too many things to do. And so they just get stuck. And so we thought, well, what if we made a process where everybody had to watch a, like a 10 to 15 minute video of me showing them how to use the software? But the problem was like, how do we get somebody to watch a 10 or 15 minute training video when they first come in? And we had the idea, like, what if we bribed them? What if we actually gave people a free T-shirt just for watching a training video and no strings attached? Like, I would actually cover the shipping and handling costs. All they had to do is just watch this video that I think was about 12 or 13 minutes long. And if they watch that, I send them a shirt in the mail. And it wasn't just any type of shirt. It had to be a really cool shirt that tied them into our brand. And so at the time, we made these really cool shirts that just our company had. And on the front said, hashtag funnel hacker, which is something that we always kind of called ourselves. And so we made these really cool shirts and we added this in our signup process. So somebody would sign up for a free trial. They'd put in their credit card, but we wouldn't bill them anything. And then the next page would say, hey, the only reason why people don't stay ClickFunnels members is because they're not sure how to use it. So to bribe you to watch this quick 12-minute training video, I'm actually going to send you one of these Funnel Hacker t-shirts for free in the mail. And like free, free, I will even pay for the shipping and handling. So at this point, these customers had spent nothing with us. We just wanted to give them this bribe to watch the training video. And so what happened over the next week or so is we started giving out hundreds and hundreds of shirts a day. And I remember my accountant and my CPA were freaking out like, we're losing money, we're losing money. We did this for about 10,000 shirts or so. And that time... 
we had a decision like, should we print another batch of shirts? Should we not do that? Like, I'm not really sure what to do. And about that time, I got an email from somebody and it was really interesting because in the email, the person said, they said, hey, just so you know, like I signed up for ClickFunnels a couple months ago. I've never actually logged in, but I've never canceled my account either. And he said, do you want to know why? I messaged him back like, yeah, I'm really curious. Why, why have you not canceled your account? He said, after you signed up, I watched the training video and he sent me the shirt that says Funnel Hacker. He said, it's my favorite shirt. I feel like I'm part of your community. I feel like I am a funnel hacker, even though I don't actually use ClickFunnels. And because of that, I don't want to lose my access to this community because it's part of my identity now. I thought, how interesting is that? And we started serving our our audience. What we found is that people who got the shirt in the mail, there were two reasons. One is because they actually watched the 12-minute demo video showing them how to use our software. But then the second is that it actually made them feel like they were part of our community. I always said that if people felt like ClickFunnels was Russell's company, we were never going to grow a brand. I wanted people to feel like they were part of what we were doing. And I wanted them to feel like, hey, I'm I'm a funnel hacker. I'm a ClickFunnels member. And so they started sending out these t-shirts. And what we found is that by, by doing Doing that, people who actually watch the video and get the t-shirt, overall, we looked at our churn numbers. Our churn numbers dropped by over 23%. Now, for a company like mine, 23% decrease in churn is worth tens of millions of dollars a year. And it all came back from giving away free t-shirts. And it wasn't like, here's a free t-shirt. You cover printing and shipping and all that kind of stuff. Like We legitimately gave out a free t-shirt just for somebody signing up and watching a demo video. So I recommend for all of you guys who are trying to figure out how do I get my customers to stick? How do I get them so they stay longer, so they keep buying from me, is to figure out a way you can send them a shirt. Now, it's not just any kind of shirt. The key to the shirts that we found, we do a lot of shirts now in almost all of our promotions, is it's something that they self-identify with. Okay, I want to be able to say on my shirt, I am a funnel hacker. I build funnels. Something where they put it on and they feel self-identified with the movement, the cause, the business, the company, whatever you want to call it for you. Something they can self-identify with. A couple of our members that have had big success with this. One is Brandon and Kaylin Poland. They own a company called Lady Boss Weight Loss. And they started making t-shirts as well that say, I'm a lady boss. And so when their women join their program, they have the shirt and they have an identity switch where they feel like they're part of this movement. And they're, and literally by putting this shirt on, putting this clothing on, they're no longer who they were in the past. They're making this shift and this transition in their life to where I'm a lady boss. And I've watched as their community has gone to over 100,000 women they've now helped to lose weight. And it's because of this identity shift that they caused inside of their customers by offering them these free t-shirts. And so for you, I would just say, how can you add something this into your sign-up process when somebody buys a product or a course from you that gets them so that they not just, you know, a nice shirt because it's a nice shirt, but a shirt that helps them self-identify with you and with your cause so they feel like they're part of it. If you do that, you reduce your cancellations, you'll decrease your churn and a whole bunch of other amazing things just like it did for us. So that's something big that we've done over the last two years now that has dramatically decreased our customers leaving and dramatically increased the profits we make on every single person who comes into our world. So I hope that helps. Thank you again, Amy, for all you do and congratulations on your 200th episode. All right. Next is Rick Mulready. You all know Rick because he's on my podcast a lot talking about Facebook ads. This time he's going to share with you a Facebook messenger strategy that is so, so good. I've got to try this one. I think you're going to love it. Hi, Aim. It's Rick Mulready here. And thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your 200th episode. Congratulations on that. I know how much hard work that you put into making this podcast such a success that it is. And thank you as always, for letting me be a small part of it. So I wanted to share with you something that I have done. I started doing this in probably mid-2017, so about six months or so ago when I'm recording this, and it worked really well. I hadn't seen anybody else doing this, and so I decided to give it a try. And that was on my podcast, I asked for people's feedback about the, my podcast. I was asking for people to give me feedback on what topics they wanted to hear, what they thought about the format, all that type of stuff. I was basically surveying my listeners and I asked them to give me that feedback via Facebook Messenger. So I asked them to message me over on Facebook. I gave them a link so that they can come over on Messenger to give me their feedback. Let me know what they think about the show, what they like to hear more of, hear less of topics, guest ideas, whatever. And originally when I had this idea to do this, the result that I got out of it was not something that I was expecting. And number one, I hadn't seen anybody do this, meaning ask for feedback via messenger. So that was the first thing. But the benefits that I'd gotten out of it were way more 
than I expected. So number one, I was getting people's feedback. I was getting their, you know, I was basically surveying them and they were giving me feedback about the show that I could use to improve the podcast. So that was number one, first and foremost. Number two, I was able to add them to my messenger list so I could message them at any time. Obviously, I would want to make it such that it's a good messenger experience, not always pushing things to them, but make it a good messenger experience. So that was number two. I was adding them to my messenger list. Number three, I was making a personal connection with each one of these people. I was actually in messenger messaging all of these people talking to them. And they were like, wait, is this really you, Rick? And I was like, yeah, heck yeah, it's me. And so I was able to make that personal connection. So I was getting feedback from them to improve the podcast. I was adding them to my messenger list. I was connecting with them, further building a deeper relationship with them. Also, the other thing that I was doing was I was asking them right then and there if they would be up for leaving a quick iTunes rating and review for the podcast. And because I had taken the time to respond to them, they felt compelled. They were giving me great feedback about the podcast anyway. I was just like, hey, also, would you be up for leaving a quick iTunes rating and review for the show? It's a big help for the podcast. And every one of them that I asked were like, holy cow, yes, I'll go do that right now. It was a huge success, and I still do it to this day. It's been a huge success. I remember over, say, like a two-week time period, I added like 25 five-star ratings and reviews for the podcast over such a short time. It bounced my ranking in iTunes and obviously added to my number of ratings and reviews. So I hadn't seen anybody else doing this. And, you know, look, it takes more time because... You physically have to go into Messenger and respond to people. And I was putting a lot of time into it, but it was really, really well worth my time. And I continue to do it this day. So because I hadn't seen anybody else doing it, I wanted to try something. It worked really, really well. And I'm going to continue to do it. So that is how I've zagged. One way I've zagged while other people are zigging. Or is it one way I've zigged while other people have zagged? I don't know what it is, but it was something different and worked really well. I hope this is helpful to your audience. Thank you again for the opportunity to be part of your podcast and congrats again on number 200. Okay, we've made it to our final guest, Jenna Kutcher. Now, I was secretly hoping that when she sent me her audio file, she would share the story of transforming her message into something more real and honest and transparent. Because I know there's a lot of talk about that, but most people don't do it. They don't walk the talk. Jenna Kutcher, one million percent does so. And so I want you to hear how she transformed her message. Hello, online marketing made easy listeners. My name is Jenna Kutcher, and I'm so honored to be celebrating Amy's 200th episode. How awesome is that? So today I want to talk about what I choose to do differently still to this day and what really helped set me apart when I was first starting out. When I first began this journey as an entrepreneur, I was a photographer. And if you know anything about that industry, photographers are a dime a dozen. The most beautiful thing about the industry is that the cost of entry is so low that so many people get a camera, get a dream, and they're able to create a business around that. And just like them, that's exactly where my journey began. But I realized very quickly on that there wasn't much that was separating us. We all were using the same cameras, the same lenses, the same presets and website templates. And in order to truly stand out, I had to go a different way. When I started reading everyone's about me sections and seeing what they were sharing online, It all sounded the same. And I realized that not all of us were born with this dream. Not all of us picked up our first camera at the age of five. And so I started to talk more about my journey of transformation. And if you've ever been through any sort of transformation, you know that it is not always easy. It's likely messy, broken, beautiful, all at the same time. And so when I really started to see a shift in my business and in my brand, it was when I opened up and shared that I don't have it all figured out, that I don't have it all together. I remember thinking about how I could truly figure out what it was that set me apart. 
And when I was on that exploration journey, I realized this one simple truth. We all do not feel enough We all are looking at everyone else and we're wondering, what do I really have to offer to this world? And so I just started to show up and to share those feelings. And man, did that catch some traction. I think people are so used to going online and seeing people that are experts, that know exactly what they're talking about, that have it all together, that present everything in a really professional way. And I realized that I could still be professional while being real and relatable and working from home in my pajamas. And so the more that I started to share those simple truths about who I am as a person, the more people started to connect with me. And that connection is what started converting people from just being followers to being paying clients. So as a photographer, I started to talk about those things that set me apart. I started talking about that windowless office that I couldn't wait to escape. I started talking about how hard it was to start a business in a profession that I had zero training in, but so much passion. Now, fast forward a few years, and I had a super, super successful photography career. I was named the top photographer in Wisconsin for many years, But people also assumed that I was doing a lot of my work in yoga pants while eating mac and cheese. And so I took what I learned in branding and I started using it in terms of being an educator and a podcaster. I started to really remove the veil that social media allows so many of us to hide behind. And I started sharing stories, the real stories about our real life. We talk about the struggle of body image and our struggle to have a baby and what that fertility journey looks like. I talk about marriage, what it really looks like to work from home, all of the things that I feel like people need to hear, that they need to know that they're not alone in. And it's not just a marketing strategy. It's a life strategy. It's a way of coping. It's a way of sharing and creating true connections. Because I think that what I've learned over the years is that people are really hungry for connection. They're hungry to know that they're not alone. And so when I was watching so many marketers showing up with beautiful hair and makeup done in a perfect studio, and they were sharing all of this incredible information, it just didn't resonate with me. Because I do my best work in my pajamas in our attic where there are usually dogs sleeping at my feet. And so I started to really just get confident in showing up just as I am, zero facade. And it worked. It really worked. And so a few years back, when I went to refresh my website, I started to ask myself, what is it that I want to portray? What do I want people to feel when they land on that homepage? And I realized that my education, my photography, all the services I offer, those are high end but you're going to get it from a laid back person. And that's possible. And so I learned to own that laid back attitude to show up just in that way, but to also make sure that all the content that I deliver, all the promises, the courses, the interviews, everything that I show up and serve with, that's high end. And so when I look back on my journey, a lot of people ask me, like, how did you get your start? And I think that it was learning how to own my awesome, how to accept my mess and how to show up authentically online, thus giving other people the permission to do the same. That changed absolutely everything for me. And if I could give you any piece of advice, it would be to figure out what your awesome is, to understand how your mess can turn into your message and how to just give people a place to say me too. There is absolutely so much power in that. Thank you so much, Amy, for having me on. I'm over here with some confetti and champagne celebrating your 200th episode. And thank you listeners for tuning in today. So there you have it. Before I jump off, I want to thank you so very much for being a loyal listener of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I don't take it lightly that you tune in every single week, take me on your walks or in the subway or in the car. I know some of you make your kids listen to this podcast on the way to school, and I apologize to them in advance. But I am one lucky girl that you take me with you and that I get to be in your earbuds every single week. Again, I don't take that lightly. Also, I want to slide into your DM with an extra special message around this concept of Zig and my own personal story of how I've done the Zig in a very different way 
way than you might have guessed. And so here's what I want you to do. One final reminder. I want you to take a screenshot of this episode, whether it be on your smartphone or on your computer. And I want you to post it on Instagram, either in an Instagram story or on your feed. Use the hashtag 200 with Amy and tag me. When you do so, I'm going to find you and I'm going to send you a personal DM with a link to that audio clip that I almost deleted, but decided against it because it was just too good not to share. And one final thing, I want to give a personal thank you to all of my guests on today's episode. I know you're busy. I know you likely didn't even have time to record that personal share for my 200th episode, but you did it anyway. And I don't take it lightly. And I really, truly appreciate you. I love you all very, very much. And I hope I can repay you in the future. Okay, guys, here's to 200 more episodes. Thanks again for listening. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com.